The charabang pulled up outside the mountain sheep, a small, unhappy public house with a thatched roof like a wig with ringworm. From a flag pole by the gents fluttered the flag of Siam. I knew it was the flag of Siam because of cigarette cards. The landlord stood at the door to welcome us, simpering like a wolf. He was a long, lean, black-fanged man with a greased love curl and pouncing eyes. What a beautiful August day, he said, and touched his love curl with a claw. That was the way he must have welcomed the mountain sheep before he ate it, I said to myself. The members rushed out, bleating, and into the bar. You keep an eye on the shara, my uncle said. See nobody steals it now. Well, there's nobody to steal it, I said, except some cows. But my uncle was gustily blowing his bugle in the bar. I looked at the cows opposite, and they looked at me. There was nothing else for us to do. Forty-five minutes passed like a very slow cloud. The sun shone down on the lonely road, the lost, unwanted boy and the lake-eyed cows. In the dark bar they were so happy they were breaking glasses. A shuny onion Breton man, with a beret and a necklace of onions, bicycled down the road and stopped at the door. Quel un grand matin, monsieur, I said. There's French boy Bach, he said. I followed him down the passage and peered into the bar. I could hardly recognize the members of the outing. They had all changed color. Beetroot, rhubarb, and puce. They hollered and rollicked in that dark, damp hole like enormous ancient bad boys, and my uncle surged in the middle, all red whiskers and bellies. On the floor was broken glass and Mr. Weasley. "'Drinks all round!' cried Bob the Fiddle, a small, absconding man with bright blue eyes and a plump smile. Ooh, "'Who's been robbing the orphans? Who sold his little Bobby to the jippos? Trust old Bob, he let you down!' <laughs> Ah, oh, you will have you little joke, said Bob the Fiddle, smiling like a razor. But I forgive you, boys. Mr. Weasley got up, hissing like a gander. That boy pushed me down deliberate, he said, pointing to me at the door. I slunk away down the passage and out to the mild good cows. Time clouded over. The cows wondered. I threw a stone at them, and they wandered, wandering away. Then out blew my uncle, ballooning, and one by one the members lumbered after him in a grizzle. They had drunk the mountain sheep dry. Mr. Weasley had won a string of onions that the shuny onion man ruffled in the bar. What's the good of onions if you left your teeth on the mantelpiece, he said. And when I looked through the back window of the thundering charabang, I saw the pub grow smaller in the distance and the flag of Siam, from the flagpole by the gents, fluttered now at half-mast. The blue bull, the dragon, the star of Wales, the tush in the wall, the sour grapes, the shepherd's arms, the bells of Abu Dhabi. I had nothing to do in the whole wild August world but remember the names where the outing stopped and keep an eye on the charabang. And whenever it passed a public house, Mr. Weasley would cough like a billy goat and cry, oh, Stop the bus! I'm dying of breath! And back we would have to go. Closing time meant nothing to the members of that outing. Behind locked doors they hymned and rumpused all the beautiful afternoon. And when a policeman entered the druid's tap by the back door and found them all choral with beer, Shh! said Noah Bowen. The pub is shut. Where do you come from? he said in his buttoned blue voice. They told him. I got a auntie there, the policeman said, and very soon he was singing, Asleep in the Deep. Off we drove again at last, the charabang bouncing with tenors and flagons, and came to a river that rushed along among willows. Water, they shouted. Porth call, sang my uncle. Where's the donkeys, said Mr. Weasley. And out they lurched to paddle and whoop in the cool, white, winding water. Mr. Franklin, trying to polka on the slippery stones, fell in twice. Nothing is simple, he said with dignity, as he oozed up the bank. It's cold, they cried. It's lovely. Oh, it's smooth as a moth's nose. It's better than Porth Call. And dusk came down warm and gentle on thirty wild, wet, pickled, splashing men without a care in the world, at the end of the world in the west of Wales. And who goes there? called Will Sentry to a wild duck flying. 
They stopped at the hermit's nest for a rum to keep out the cold. I played for Abaravon in 1898, said a stranger to Enoch Davis. Liar, said Enoch Davis. I can show you photos, said the stranger. Forged, said Enoch Davis. And I'll show you my cup at home. Stolen. I got friends to prove it, the stranger said in a fury. Bribed, said Enoch Davis. On the way home, through the simmering, moon-splashed dark, old O. Jones began to cook his supper on a primer stove in the middle of the Sharabang. Mr. Weasley coughed himself blue in the smoke. Stop the bus, he cried. I'm dying of breath. We all climbed down into the moonlight. There was not a public house in sight. So they carried out the remaining cases and the primer stove and old O. Jones himself and took them into a field and sat down in a circle in the field and drank and sang while O. Jones cooked sausage and mash and the moon flew above us. And there I drifted to sleep against my uncle's mountainous waistcoat and as I slept, Who goes there? called out Will Sentry to the flying moon. <laughs>